recording and this will be on our YouTube page. So if anybody would like to forward it to somebody or um, anybody who wasn't able to make it today will get to see it later. And I'll send that link out um, in an email afterwards. So Leandra, she is the program specialist. Um, at COPE and she is going to be presenting. So I will mute myself and you can take over here. Hello everyone. So I just want to say hello. Uh, my name is Leandra Vicente. I am the um, program specialist for the Fruits and Vegetables Prescription Program and um, we do work at um, COPE. So I'm going to be sharing my screen. So give me one second and I can share my screen. Mm. Okay, so are you guys able to see the screen? Perfect. Alrighty, so let's get started. So we are the Navajo Fruits and Vegetables Prescription Program. And um, again, my name is Leandra. And whoop, let's get on to the first slide. So um oops uh -oh. having technical difficulties <laughs> give me one second uh -oh. okay so the Community Outreach and Patient Empowerment, so here is our, our mission. Um, we believe that the power to overturn, overturn long-standing historical health inequities lies inherently in Native communities themselves. So um, just the first bullet is just, um, of course, our nonprofit is Native controlled. We definitely have a lot of um, partners in the Navajo Nation. And of course, um, a lot of employees like myself is um, really, um, are all full Navajo, so we definitely really take pride in that. So the next one is our partners. So here is our partners below is our Navajo Department of Health, Navajo Area IHS, um, growers, of course, some community growers and farmers markets are really available for um, these type of um, voucher programs, as we mentioned, and um, the small stores, grocery stores are our partners as well. We definitely work really closely with our stores um, in the community on Navajo Nation, whether if it's um, the local store named Bashes or trading posts, so, um, and of course, like gas stations and convenience stores. So we definitely work well with them as well. And then the tribal leadership, like the Navajo Nation government, um, we definitely um, invite Navajo Nation Vice President Jonathan Nez and um, Navajo Nation President Russell Begay they definitely are really good um, advocates for our program as well. And of course, um, the community advisors. So this could range to either um, community coalition members or either just um, even just community participants. So we definitely have the like, community advisory like committees um, to benefit feedback from our work and of course vice versa, we get feedback from them. So. So yeah, it's really great partnership. And of course, um, communities we serve is the Navajo Nation for one thing, and then um, our recent one, which is the Rosebud Sioux Tribe. So we definitely um, have a program out there and um, we have great work going well with them as well. So, but this specifically for today, we'll just focus on really on Navajo Nation. So yeah, so next slide. Um, so, Next one, this is just like a, a model of our, um, of our program. So we really, for this, um, for the FERX program in general, you really go by early life course interventions. So whether if it's, um, you know, starting at early age makes great habits. So based on science on early health course interventions is like very positive and it strengthens, it strengthens um, base philosophy. And COPE has decided to focus on pregnant um, mothers from age um, and or for from pregnant mothers and postpartum up to two years. And of course, um, children from birth to six years old. And we try to catalyze that change um, within our lifetime. So this is just kind of a dynamic with the pregnant mom and of course the baby and then just um, all the way to childhood. So it's really great model that we try to um, go by with the, um, specifically for the fruits and vegetables program.
So as I mentioned, these are just kind of like the neuro, neurocog neurocognitive development and um, childhood obesity, chronic diseases, um, and just really trying to focus on that type of um, action. So uh, let me go into my next slide. So this next slide is really um, focusing on the challenges. Um, the challenges. So a lot of a lot of times on Navajo Nation, five per fifty one percent travel. Like a lot of folks on Navajo Nation travel more than an hour to buy food, uh, whether if it's the local border towns or either to like the local trading posts or even um, to the biggest um, grocery store on Navajo Nation, which is called Bashes. So majority of communities on Navajo Nation really try to, you know, travel more than just an hour to buy food. So that's really been a challenge for a lot of folks. And um, next one is 32% rely on other, others for transportation. So um, of course, that's actually a big challenge as well. How would you get your food without tra having transportation? So that has been a challenge. Um, next one is 55% don't eat enough fruits and vegetables um, due to like the food insecurity, the food deserts on the Navajo Nation, and of course just even the travel time. So a lot of people don't ever or don't don't get a lot of those um, nutrition or nutrients and um, produce um, selections. And of course, 26% um, do skip meals due to a lack of money. So that's really great that with this program, the fruits and vegetables program, um, we allow that additional support through the voucher system. It's kind of like similar to WIC and SNAP, but I'll get more into the programmatic details in the, fewer, in the next few slides. So on the bottom, here's just like a chart where um, kind of just going over the statistics is like overweight and obese. So these are children's ranging from three to four, 16% is um, overweight and 33% are obese. And then the same for five to six years old are 10% um, overweight and 74 obese. So yeah, and, this, um, and these findings are from our 2014 findings. So again, here's a um, citations for it if you guys wanna look in more into um, that article. So yeah, and um, so moving forward to the solution, um, more fruits and vegetables um, available in the community. So this is one thing that we try to really um, encourage is um, creating more of an initiative amongst stores, either if it's local trading posts, convenience stores, um, gas stations, and to help empower growers to grow large bulks of produce and to sustain that growing capacity. Um, so that's one thing we really try to sh um, strive for with local growers around the Navajo Nation. There's a lot of communities out there that do have that, you know, capacity to get those bigger bulks and larger um, produce into the local stores or even just um, to create the trading or the, um, the farmer's market. So just creating that partnership and it'd be really great in advocating for like a food policy to allow growers to get their produce into the stores. So that's really great. And um, next one is cheaper prices for fruits and vegetables in local stores. So really advocating for local produce can help bring um, down prices such as distribution costs, such as if it was a local growth, it would be decreased significantly, but just that cost of um, distribution, getting produce to the stores using outside sources is very um, heavy on the pricing on the produce. So. That's one thing we've been really trying to um, advocate for as well. And then um, hands-on learning, which is new tasting and recipes, of course, having food demos at like local um, health fairs or even just um, our community health teams are implementing this program all around their um, IHS facilities. Um, really try to, um, at each education session, they really try to promote um, food demos and letting participants try out new recipes and shopping on a budget. So, and then the Healthy Diné Nation Act. So um, going back in history, in 2014, our former Navajo Nation president, Ben Shelley, has, um, he signed an act called the Navajo, or the Healthy Diné Nation Act into the law. Um, this act is actually promoting a healthier lifestyle for the Navajo Nation, advocating and commit to the budget within you like yearly round is um and and the finance of health education human services around the Navajo Nation so really trying to take the act upon 
us to deliver that type of um, resources for the Navajo Nation. So I really like that that act was really empower or powerful for a lot of resources on the Navajo Nation. So that's when that act was signed in 2014. And I know that kind of really ties to the Navajo Nation junk food tax, which I'll probably, I'll, I'll talk more about later on. And um, support community development, of course, that development and that support is really crucial, um, either if it's with um, farmer market growth or either um, food policy. So just that type of support and um, development really helps with this type of solution of the challenge. And um, of course, promote economic development. Um, COPE is really great about that, or we're really great about that. Whatever grant that we get rewarded, we really try to support the local economy on Navajo Nation. Um, so whatever partners, um, partnering stores we have who are all FERX retailers, we really try to keep it on the Navajo Nation to co support that economic growth. So, yeah. Um, let me go on to my next slide. Okay. So this one is just like another structural framework that we also um, go by as well, which is looking at it at the socio-ecological -eco standpoint, um, such as structural. So this is really talking about the geographic, geographic, which is like the water axis. So of course, to grow the produce with these local growers, we have to find, you know, what are the water axis? Is it contaminated? Is it fresh water? Is it stream water? Is it aquifers, just like trying to figure out that type of knowledge is really great for these um, growers to um, have access to. And of course, again, that would, that would really help with bulking up the produce produ production. And of course, just um, roads, you know, transportation is a really big deal. Um, trying to get to the local um, grocery stores, again, 51%. Um, on the Navajo Nation do rely or do travel more than an hour to get to a local um, to a local store. So that's really, really one thing that we got to um, really um, take into account are the roads. And of course, the land rights, you know, there's BIA, there's trust lands, and of course, there's those checkerboards. So just really trying to find that line of who can we, um, who can we implement this program to and um, yeah, and of course the communities, which is on tribal sovereignty, health and Diné nation act, which is the junk food tax, um, financial and food assistance programs such as WIC and SNAP, really trying to build that partnership with them and getting that technical support of the voucher system and the retailers and so forth. Um, and then moving forward to community, the multi-level cross-sector um, approach, which is of course, creating that collaboration with small stores, trading posts, community gardens, senior centers, um, school and early childhood education center centers, um, chapter houses, clinics, and um, community health programs. So um, including the community health represent representatives and the special diabetes project. And of course, the list goes on. So definitely like to create that or have that um, partnership available to us just to you know, create that unity and dynamic of um, working as a team. So um, household, go, so now going back to the access to healthcare and access to food. So going, tripling down to, of course, the participants in the household and the family. So that, again, just whole, this whole inner circle of um, intergenerational teaching, you know, how grandma and grandpa can teach the child and how vice versa child can teach grandma and grandpa about either healthy living, healthy lifestyles, even just traditional practices. So that's really great that intergenerational teaching really helps. And of course, going to um, this um, word I'll announce, it's in Navajo, it's called eh. So we really go um, in depth with family dynamic and eh means um, family. So of course, you know, on Navajo Nation, the traditional practices is family is everything. You know, we work, we work for the family, we feed the family, we try to get as, as much resources for the family. So that's how we get that component of uh, which is um, family. So of course, and then um, going to, moving forward is backyard gardens. So of course, I'm having that whole um, traditional, going back to the traditional ways of having your own garden. 
and knowing those type of um, resources that are out there, such as for us, that we deliver a lot of these, um, you know, technical aspects of trying to create a better garden, such as composting, um, whether if it's um, soil um, testing and just, you know, so forth. So we definitely have that full round circle of um, projects going on within COAT. And of course, some um, health literacy, you know, knowledge between like nutrition, um, food, even medical tech, um, medical terminology, um, finding that partnership with the community health represent rep representatives and the community health um, teams, which is clinicians, um, public health nurses. So just knowing that health literacy is very important. So, yeah, um, I'll go to my next slide. So the six slides really, we're gonna go more depth in depth of the uh, Navajo Fruits and Vegetables Prescription Program. So this is just kind of introducing the um, going into, going, going more into that programmatic um, resources. So um, what is the fruit and vegetable prescription program? So we try to go by the, or actually we go by the cross sector, sector approach um, to increase affordable access to health, healthier food. That's for main thing or number one thing is to um, get that affordable and accessible to community. Um, so just building that type of partnership and that demand for fresh fruits and vegetables. So that cross sector approach. And then of course, some um, healthcare provider teams, Heather, um, so that would go do the prescription to get the voucher. So um, a lot of these clinical teams get the prescription, um, you know, write a prescription. And after that, um, the families do receive um, the vouchers after an education session. So I'll go more um, into details about that in my later slides. So, um, and of course for fruits and vegetables, um, healthy coaching on nutrition and healthier lifestyle. So again, that's where we get the um, education session within those six months. And then, um, of course, participating with retailers um, located in the community and making sure that they have enough um, stock of healthier foods and a variety of foods for these communities to um, get, to have access to. So, um, so, yeah, and of course, this program was adapted from Wholesome Waves. So Wholesome Waves is the one that really helps us with the technical part of um, this program, and we just make it feasible to, for the Navajo Nation. So, yeah, really great um, dialogue here. Um, so going more into it, so um, the Navajo Epirex. So, um, of course, our goal is to increase consumptions of of um, fruits and vegetables. So that's one thing that we, that's one of our really big goal, as I mentioned. And of course, improve intergenerational health outcomes, um, promote economic um, development of local food systems on Navajo Nation, such as um, getting growers on board. Um, also increasing access to healthier foods for all Navajo families. Um, and then on the right, here's just like a um, diagram and model of our FERX team and then our FERX family and then our retailers. And here's a side one where it's kind of yellow, like a yellow leaf is the local community members. So again, like these, we try to partner with a, a lot of retailers on the Navajo Nation to get access to fresh fruits and vegetables, but also we don't want to leave out the local community members that do not, that aren't on to, that are not in this program. So we try to get that, you know, that variety of fresh fruits and vegetables to the local communities as well. Just trying to really emphasize the holistic approach and the program's ability to empower, um, whether if it's providers, community members, and, um, you know, that messaging that food is medicine. So just really trying to get that full circle rounded of um, ideas and um, actuality and thoughts into this. So this one is really, really explaining, this is a dialogue really explaining about the Navajo FERX um, program in like one image. Um, of course, families continue through two, four of, um, two to four. So let me just go by step one, where you see the mom and the child, or um, the, the parent and the child, which is on family. So who are eligible for this program? 
is families from household um, that have household of a, a pregnant woman or a child from zero to six. Um, they can be, they are eligible for this program. Um, and of course, um, going to step two is participants attend monthly education sessions during the six month program to refill, refill their um, FERX prescription and set goals and targets for healthier lifestyles. And then within that process, we have um, clinical teams, either they're interprofessional or interdisciplinary teams that do implement these programs within their community. So, um, which is really great is that they really want this for the community. So going, moving on to step three is the FERX um, Community Health distributes the FERX prescription during the visit and collects health indicators like fruits and vegetables consumption. So usually teams, they, they um, kind of divide their roles. So whether if it's the team leader that, that gives out the prescription or either if it's um, the leader, there's many roles into this, um, into this program, whether if it's the team leader, a co-leader, um, let's see, like the data collector to get all the surveyors. Um, from all families that are in this program, um, and of course, the store liaison. So it depends on what, you know, we really try to empower the team to imp implement this program, their community, and they really like that aspect. Um, so then step four is prescription is redeemed for fresh, um, fresh or frozen fruit and vegetables at local stores and communities. So this is one thing that um, my colleague, Donya Carroll, she really, um, she really works with the stores one-on-one. -on -one. She really collaborates with the, either the owner or the manager of the store to get these stores on board. So she did, um, we do have like an unacceptable and acceptable list of um, fruits and vegetables. And what's really nice is that um, it's not just um, the fruits and vegetables as well. It's actual, it's actual or it's, it's also the um, traditional foods such as sumac berries, um, blue corn meal, blue corn mush, um, you know, just very varieties of traditional food and also um, steamed corn. So those um, families can actually redeem their vouchers um, by, um, you know, redeem their vouchers by getting um, fresh fruits and vegetables and also traditional foods as well that is on the list. Um, and then step five is um, families show increase in healthy habits and disease and chronic diseases. So that's actually great. And I know I'll go more into our data or our collection that we've been getting in our recent cycle. So I'll go more into that in our next slide. So here's actually a big question that has been really um, formulating because this, this program has been getting really big on the Navajo Nation and it's really great. It's really wonderful. Um, so a lot of um, folks usually come or usually ask um, our team of how do teams get started? So we usually um, tell them that, you know, exploring FERX is we usually give them like a presentation or either like a like um, kind of like pamphlets and stuff like that about how, you know, what does the, what does the program actually entail? So just like exploring the FERX and of course um, they actually have a team in mind already. So they kind of, that actually hasn't been really an issue is like forming a team because whether if it's like in a clinical side, like they get um, their public health nurses, their community health um, representatives, or um, even just um, their clinician or um, physician on board. So it's really great that they already know their team. So that's actually wasn't really a big deal. And um, of course, going into the FERX training workshop, we have um, a special training. It's called the Community Health Team Curriculum. Um, it's based in four modules. So module one is really gearing toward um, how to make the team, um, like empower the team and structuring of the team. And they, of course, they have like their own roles of like where they, what they want to be, either if it's the team leader, the store liaison, the data collector. So it's really great to get that team dynamic involved. So that's module one. And then module, module two is on really trying to get that morale booster. I would mention kind of like really some teams kind of, um, whether if it's like recruitment or either, whether if it's, um, you know, um, a turnover rate within their staff or something, we really try to get that morale booster within the module two training. So um, yeah, it's really great that they reach out to us and be like, hey, we want module two, or either we reach out to them and be like, hey, do you want module two? So it's really great um, partnership. 
So then um, module three is kind of like a debrief, like how their team went, how did they, you know, what did they want to do better? What were the barriers? What were their success? What were their challenges of being a team and implementing this program within their community? So that's module three. And um, also the next one is recruitment. So recruitment, um, I would say a lot of teams do not have a problem with recruitment, um, trying to get participants involved into this program. Um, they kind of, most of them are um, interprofessional. So some of them are clinicians, either nurses, um, you know, public health nurses, and they do know who, what, what patient or client that they see would participate in this program. So that's one thing that recruitment is not really a big deal or hasn't been a big deal lately. So that's great that they know their community. They know, you know, who could benefit with this um, support. So it's really nice seeing that. And of course, um, the FERX sessions, the fruits and vegetable prescription sessions. So um, again, this um, program is a six month cycle. So every month these participants, they do get um, an education session. And after the education session, whether if it's the, educa the education session, whether if it's like food demos or either nutritional you know, portion sizes, or um, you know, it could be a number of things like curriculums that are out there they definitely implement it into this program. And after that education session, they, um, they give out the, pres or the voucher, they give out their prescription and of course their voucher. And after that, the families can redeem their um, voucher. So, yeah. Um, so my next slide is uh, fruits and vegetables. So this is a team. This is one of the team photos. This is one of our teams. Um, they're really great. So, so after they, you know, they get their onboarding and um, their training and all that good stuff, they have um, administrative approval. So whether if it's like their manager or either even just um, their secretary, or anything like that, they have administration administration um, support. Um, so that's one great great aspect about that, and um, they are able to enroll families and deliver monthly health coaching. That could be like the education session and um, prescribe FERX vouchers, as I mentioned, and communicate regularly with um, with co and collect data. So that's one thing is part of the role is to collect data. So we distribute monthly surveys and we have like a, um, we would say a, a tracker to track all the um, data collection. And that's really great is that we see results with either the BMI and um, you know, the weight, the, the just everything like that, arranging about that, which is like the survey. So it's really great seeing all that, um, that change within their community. And of course, designate a team leader and designate a store liaison. So those are kind of like all the main roles that entail this, um, the FDR team. So moving on to the Healthy Store Initiative. Um, so this is one of our um, one of our partnering stores. This is at the T Snows Bus Trading Post. And this is actually a really great store. One of our many great um, stores is that those refrigeration was actually provided by um, Cope. So with the grant funding, we really try to get refrigerations to these stores to give the variety of um, fresh foods and vegetables in, this, in the local trading post. So this is a trading post. And um, of course, the community members too has been very um, beneficial with this because you know a lot of a lot of the produce actually run out by the end of the week. So we try to, you know, help the stores get their suppliers on board and try to you know refill these refrigerators. So it's really great. And um, the Healthy Navajo Store Initiative is basically is a program that works to support and build capacity within the local retailers. Um, whether if it's to stock fresh fruits and vegetables or make a healthier food available to um, the communities. And my colleague, Donya Carroll, this is her project, and she's really been um, an advocate for all these stores or even an advocate to the community members because community members show that they really want to have access to these type of foods. So it's really great. So um, that's actually a really great initiative, and I'll have another um, picture showing up. So again, we work with growers and stores. So on the, um, 
On the left side, um, top left side, here is one of a um, small farmer's market. So here's a farmer's market. Um, this is at um, Ojo Encino, and they're called the Hospitable Growers. They have been extremely, extremely um, beneficial. And actually, they're, they've been really great. Um, I love how their dynamic is with their community members and, of course, like their growers. Uh, we do have a program in um, Cuba, New Mexico, and Ojo Encino is like probably a couple of minutes away from Cuba. So um, they go out to Ojo Encino to implement this program, and participants do get their vouchers, and they redeem it at this local um, trading, or not trading post, um, farmer's market. So they kind of been working hand, hand in hand on this, and it's really wonderful to see that type of dynamic. So it's just creating empowerment and unity within the community. So it's really great that these um, growers are getting that extra support that we um, you know, that we allow, so we want to create that dynamic. So next one is, um, um, we would see on the top right side, again, it's just another store with the um, refrigerations and that variety of, um, of fresh fruits and vegetables. So it's really great seeing that type of color in a store because um, a lot of stores on, on that nation really promote, you know, like a lot of junk foods like soda, um, chips, and stuff like that, and um, definitely we, with the Healthy Store Initiative, we train all these stores to um, keep the fresh fruits in, available in the front so that when people walk in, they see those type of colors and they want to, you know, eat like a fruit or even just like a, um, like an orange or even like an apple, so it's really great seeing that is that um, a lot of a lot of folks um, want to get more fresh fruits and vegetables rather than chips or soda. So, yeah. So the next one is our map of our FERX sites. So this has been very beneficial to a lot of our participants. Um, this is kind of like we're just really currently testing it out. And right now it is on our website. So. Um, um, as you can see is that um, all the orange little dots are the current FERX stores that we have on board and this is the whole Navajo Nation region. So it's really sporadically spread it out and we're not just working with one area or one region within the Navajo Nation. We're working with a lot of service units around um, the Navajo Nation and of course some. Um, so those are the stores and then the, the yellow are the future FERX stores. So here, the yellow, you see the little dots on the other side is that um, on the far left side is that um, we want to work with those stores and we're actually in the process of trying to get these stores trained and, um, you know, get them on board with our processes. So it's really, it's really nice seeing that dynamic. And um, so then all the, all the H, all the H's are like the current FERX clinics. So you can see like all the clinics that we have on board so far. And again, it's just really sporadic and we try to hit every region as much as we could to get this type of um, program out there. So, yeah. So here is our findings. So I'll go more into the nitty gritty of our statistics as you would call it. So let me go, and this is from our pediatric cohort. Um, so here's just kind of like our baseline characteristics are in equal 74. So it's kind of really going into um, the 54% of um, male um, average ages are four to 10 months. Um, average household size is the maximum household size um, is on five with more than people of five. And then 91% are food insecure, of course, according to USDA. And 50% uh, um, our children are either obese or overweight. So just seeing that type of dynamic. And then the food assistant program, which is a lot of people are on SNAP, which is 74% and WIC 62%. And as I mentioned that we really try to collaborate with these type of uh, programs just to get like some, you know, feedback and technical assistance among like stores and also just the voucher process. So, yeah. So change in fruits and vegetables consumption, all children in equals 74. So um, again, you can see that the fruits and vegetable servings a day um, is increasing. 
So from, from before FERX was 2.6 and then after it's 3.4. 3 um, and then of course, vegetable, vegetable and average number of serving days is 2.6 and then after is 3.3. And this is all from n equals 65 and n equals 62. And it's really good to see the, um, you know, person, uh, participants meeting the recommended recommendation of like either fruits and vegetables and the proportion of kids, um, you know, increasing. And that 85% of participants were meeting the five-day recommendation for fruits and vegetables by the end of the program, which is really great. Um, these are really actually really great findings. So we go on to the next one. So percent, um, whoops, let me go back. So percent children meeting national recommendations. So um, these are all in percent. So serving of vegetables, uh, fruits and vegetables, um, of course, baseline 66 in the, in the program got it to 85%. And the minutes of physical activity was um, 42%. And after the program, when it ended, went up to 63%. And then um, hours of sleep night, um, 33% and then 13%. Um, hours of screen day, screen day was It'd be either iPods or I mean iPads, um, phones, so or even just television. So those are just meaning screen day is on um, 40, 40, 40 percent, and then after the program was seventy nine percent. So yeah, it's really great seeing that change. Oops. So again, um, this one's just another one going into another chart going into the change in fruits and vegetables consumption and weight among children with baseline of overweight and obesity in equals 26. So just seeing this really great results is wonderful. Um, but yeah, um, for FERX and after FERX, just seeing these numbers change, increasing, increasing the significant value among um, of course, by the end of, per, end of the program, consumptions of both fruits and vegetables had increased a um, significant amount, as I mentioned, and the significant reduction um, in BMI among kids who came into the program overweight or obese. So, yeah, it's amazing. So we're really excited to see the next findings for our cycle three because this was all cycle two. So next one is um, program participation. So um, as you can see how many um, um, participants participated. So 63% um, attended all six sessions and 94% attended at least three sessions and only attended one session. So these clinical teams really try hard to get these participants to their monthly education session. And if, they, if most participants cannot make it to their um, monthly education session, they do makeup sessions. And that's really great coming from the clinical aspect because we all know that clinicians and um, of course public health nurses and so forth in the um, public health field is just very swamped and busy, but they make that time to get that education. So it's really get that education participants involved in getting their vouchers and their um, prescription out. So. They do makeup sessions either one on one. So, this is just kind of explaining more about what participant did what. And of course, only one attended on one session, which is 8%. So, it's really great. So, next one is FERX impact on food environment. So, this is kind of like a one year follow up. So FERX supply among FERX um, store versus non-FERX store. So 2.36 more um, healthier fruits and veggies, um, 2.33 more fresh fruits and vegetables. So you can just see the increased amounts. Um, and then of course, no difference in veggies just yet. <laughs> so we hope to see that, um, you know, that dynamic and that shift to changing to see um, more variety of veggies and of course, um, fruit. So FERX impact on healthier shopping. So two or 692 consume inter or so these are the surveys. So these are basically the store surveys that our other um, group of um, 
um, team members do. They do a lot of like the store surveys. They're called the monitoring and evaluation team. So um, one of our colleagues, um, Carmen, um, Carmen and Joan, they really try to work hard with these findings. And um, so they found this 692 consume interconception surveys on 14 FERX stores and 14 non FERX stores match the baseline healthy store index. So shoppers leaving FERX stores are 1.5 times more likely to buy fresh fruits and vegetables compared to non stores. Um, which is really awesome. Um, positive spill over effect of stores participating in increasing healthy um, purchasing by community members. So it's really great seeing these community members, especially like some grandma and grandpas really wanting to get fresh fruits and vegetables and it's really great and they really want to know how to either, you know, make eggplant or even just how to, how to emphasize or bring on cow into their diet. So it's really, it's really great dynamic. Um, whoops, I think I skipped the head, sorry. So, yeah. So, okay, so these are kind of just like the take home lessons. So, FERX and Navajo Nation. So, um, these are increased um, F our fruits and vegetables consumption, and of course, decrease in BMI, which is really wonderful. Increase um, in local fruits and vegetables availability and increase in local fresh and fresh fruits and vegetable purchasing. And um, yeah, and this picture was taken at Ojo Encino, and um, she's a really great advocate. We just love her. <laughs> so yeah. So on to my next slide. So these are just kind of really success stories from all, all aspects of the program, whether if it's the store owner, the dietitian, and the participant. So let me just read a few of those. Um, so the first from the store owner is when we put veggies out, they sell. I enjoy being part of the process. Um, the motivation is here and the job is here so I mean just like the community members in general they're really motivated to start eating healthier instead of having a lot of processed foods within their diet and of course having it available there available for them there was really you know seeing that dynamic of change is, is nice and then of course this is from um, a dietitian we have never heard such positive feedback from patients from any other program they repeated repeatedly thank us and say what a different what a, different, what a difference this program is making in their lives. Their children are asking for fruit. So even the um, clinical aspect, they're really seeing a lot of their patients changing their um, health, their eating habits and of course their diet. And um, they really love that program for that. Um, and of course it helps with like chronic diseases and so forth. And this is from the FERX participant. Instead of candy and chips, my daughter wants avocados. So uh, I just love that. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. So, the current status. So, right now we have 16 um, fruits and vegetables, or um, yeah, FERX teams. Um, these are all um, interdisciplinary, interprofessional teams around, around the Navajo Nation in all, in most of IHS sites, not all, but most. Um, we're hoping for, you know, all, but we'll see how that will go. But it's really wonderful. And of course, um, 26, 26 stores are on board as retailers. Um, so again, that kind of map really shows a lot. Um, about where we're located and what places um, these um, participants can redeem their vouchers. And of course, on um, two farmers markets, so it's really great. There's the um, Ojo and Sino folks, and of course, there's going to be one in um, um, Shiprock. So we're just trying to get that on board next growing season, helping them with that support and initiative, um, you know, having these produce available for these um, participants. And then um, 300 plus families. So it's really great seeing them. That is that 300 families are um, are using this program and they're really benefiting off of it. So it's awesome. So next steps, of course, um, dissemination um, and scaling. Um, we try to scale again. We're trying to hit every site as much as we can to get this some um, support onto the Navajo Nation. Um, 
just seeing the success off of this is really great. And I know a lot of um, the clinicians and um, public health nurses really see a lot of um, great change. And of course, at the community health representatives. Um, and of course, sustainability, that's one thing that we're really trying to um, help with is um, sustainability, trying to get those, um, you know, the like grants that we can be, um, grant opportunities and just so forth and trying to keep this team or trying to keep the um, teams and also the participants and um, the program running longer. So, yeah. And I think that's pretty much about it. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, yeah. Thank you Thank so you. much, Sandra. We are really, yeah. um, this is exciting stuff to, to hear about, especially as big of a, um, you know, as big as your community is, um, you guys have really been able to accomplish a lot and, and um, reach to a lot of different areas of Navajo Nation. Yeah, definitely. We're going to open it up for questions. We have about 10 more minutes of our time left here. Does anybody have questions that they'd like to ask Leandra? You can type them into the group chat or you um, are welcome to unmute yourself and share your questions that way also. Well, I had one question um, while we're waiting for others to come up with them, and I just wanted to, I just wanted to clarify. So um, whenever somebody enters the program, they have monthly sessions for si up to six sessions. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Monthly sessions up to um, six sessions. Mm -hmm. So okay. it goes on to six months. Okay, so then does a person cycle, can they cycle back through if they still qualify at the end of those six months or is their turn up there, sort of? Yeah, that's actually a great question is, um, well, that one we really leave it up to the teens, whether they want to either, so if the mother, the pregnant mom was the one that um, enrolled in to the um, program, we say that if you want to keep the same family, maybe one thing that it's really up to the teens or sometimes they have like a wait list and then they, um, they um, get the next person on board. So, yeah. Okay. okay. And then one more question I had was if somebody wanted to start a program like this, um, would they, um, could they reach out to you and you would help them? Like it sounds like you've done Rosebud. Um, yeah, well, actually, we don't have this program in Rosebud, but um, we hope to have that um, there in Rosebud. But um, definitely, I think um, um, I would probably chime in on Wholesome Waves as well. So um, Julia Pond has been great technical support. So I think, um, yeah, that would be great is just to reach out and then I can, you know, get that connections going with Wholesome Waves. So yeah, okay, definitely. Um, and then I have one more question. Where would somebody find funding for something like this? Like Great question. What? There's a lot of, mm -hmm. so in regards to sustainability, man, that's actually a really great question. Um, I think one thing is, um, that's one thing that Wholesome Ways really help us with is like they, they find, or um, also our director, Sonia Shin, is the one that really try to find grants out there to support this type of program. And um, so far, I think just like seeking out on your own and seeing you know, what areas you can um, get kind of grant support and stuff. It's just very, just searching, yeah. Okay. Um, so Nettie um, asked, um, who sponsors the voucher program and how much do participants receive in form of vouchers? So do they receive like an amount, a dollar amount, or do they receive like a certain X pounds of whatever, you know, fruits mm -hmm. and pounds of vegetables. What does that look like? Yeah, great question. So um, 
actually, so each voucher, I wish I had a voucher with me right now. <laughs> um, each voucher is actually individual wrap voucher is, is um, worth $7. And then four of those vouchers are in one booklet. So each booklet is um, $28. So they get four booklets. So that's like $112 oh, wow. a month that they can use to get fruit, fresh fruits and vegetables. Yeah, so it's really great. And of course, it depends on the, whole, uh, um, on the household size. So um, majority of families on that donation are above four to five people. And of course, this is ranging from grandma, grandpa, child, um mom and dad so oops i think i cool. got frozen here so cool. yeah Thank and of course so um who sponsors the voucher program is um yeah okay are there any other questions before we wrap up today guys Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, so we had somebody ask um, what, she joined a little bit late, but she's wondering what do the six sessions cover? Is that up to the team or um, is there like a prescribed, um, you know, so many topics that you guys recommend people go over? Yeah, yeah. Actually, the six um, six month education sessions are basically up to the team. You know, whether if they want to do local um, curriculum, such as um, I mean, our curriculum is um, our folks in um, our team. They created a curriculum which is called Healthy Moms, Happy Babies, and also um, Happy Homes. So basically, that that program is or that curriculum is basically set for six months so I mean it depends where either they um, really the, the big one too is um, from John Hopkins um, family spirit I think I think that's what their curriculum is called yeah they usually use that curriculum or even from our Arizona first things first um, eat play grow so it really depends on the on the um, clinical team so yeah it's definitely it's not really we, we don't really like kind of kind of want to you know take ownership of that we just kind of like let them want to do like their curriculum whether if it's our curriculum whether if it's from john hopkins or arizona first things first so yeah they, they decide okay great mm -hmm. thank you um and then we have one more question that asks um who developed the eligibility of amount of voucher um like per family size? Mm -hmm. um, that's actually a great question. I think, I believe, um, so our director, Sonia Shin, has been really um, technical savvy about that part, about the eligibility. And um, I know Wholesome Waves um, really helped us with the eligibility requirements, but I think in terms of that is really just um, finding the um, where the target audience or where the target population is really needing. And we found that maternal health and early childhood is really the the baseline of trying to getting that healthy initiative going. So that's why we use those eligibilities. Okay. Um, and then I'm just going to have this be our last question. It's a really good question. Uh, just to be uh, respectful of everybody's time. Do you guys run into issues with families not knowing how to use the fruits and vegetables and having them go to waste? Yeah, actually, that's actually a really great question. So I think that's one great thing that our clinical team has been really chomping down at, whether if it's food demos and stuff, and such as like um, learning how to can or drying the fruit and stuff like that. That's one thing that they've been really helping um, participants with because our, I would say like our first cycle, because um, this is our third cycle now, um, um, our first cycle had, we we're running into those type of problems, but now I feel like it hasn't been really much of a big problem. I think the only problem that we've been having in terms of fresh fruits and vegetables is um, actually picking out the produce, you know, like, cause a lot of people, you know, like um, a family actually told one of the clinicians saying that, oh, I, I bought like a whole, um, I would say like a whole case of blueberries and we didn't know there was mold on there. So how do we go about picking those type of produce? So that's one thing that they've been actually really trying to emphasize is how to not waste, you know, get their produce spoiled or either not waste their produce. So, yeah. Okay. 
Well, thank you so much, Leandra. This was really informative and it's exciting stuff to hear about. Um, yeah. Just um, a few things for everybody. I already posted the um, evaluation link. I'm going to repost it though because it got lost up there in the questions. So I'm posting it right now. We really appreciate it when you guys fill that out. That way we know um, how well we did and how we can improve in future webinars. Um, and um, I'd like to remind you guys that next month on December 13th, we'll be here again at one o'clock. And Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board is gonna be presenting on components of their tribal policy toolkit. And uh, we'll send out an invitation to everyone and a reminder letting you know um, where to be and what the link is. And if this is your first time um, visiting us or you haven't received um, an email directly from the Good Health and Wellness team here at Great Plains Tribal Chairman's Health Board, we would love it if you would um, put your email address in the chat box so that we can get you the evaluation uh, form and then we're also going to be sending out a YouTube link because this video or this webinar has been recorded. So if you want to watch it again um, or if you want to share it with somebody else, you can do that. Um, am I forgetting anything? Yeah, so share your email address with us. Please do the feedback survey. And I think that's it. Thank you again so much, Leandra and Cope, for sharing and for all the great work that you do. And thank you to everyone who joined us today. Uh, it was an honor to spend the afternoon with you. Have a great day, guys. Bye.